Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. We're up to part three of this week's episode of the show. We're diving even deeper into our conversation with this week's guest. Let's continue exploring their inspiring journey. If you've missed part one and two, definitely go back and catch up. Also, if you're not subscribing, please, please subscribe. Enjoy the rest. On a daily basis, but we, we prepare about 300 meals every day. Um, yeah. We provide oh, a tuition uh, for the kids, ensure that they have the support that they need to go to school. Um, mm. But I do hope that uh, by doing that um, for the typical story um, that David hears me asking him the question that Joe Forba asked me, and that is, what do you want to do? Yes. Um, and, and, and so uh, just making sure that we are honoring his story, we are honoring his journey, um, and that's just one of 250 kids that walk through our doors every day um, with stories of struggles, but just uh, hopes and dreams that inspire me uh, and, mm -hmm. and to understand that it doesn't matter where you are born, doesn't matter what corner of the world you come from or what you look like. Every child has big dreams. Absolutely. Um, and, and it's up to us to, to truly find um ways to honor their hopes and dreams first and then invest in it the right way uh, yeah uh, it's beautiful and you know that's their that's as the typical day do you think as has nigeria changed um since you were there because obviously it's been quite a while since uh, you lived there i know you go back frequently um but paint we know your mum struggled. Her monthly wage, she said, wouldn't even cover a pair of shoes. Correct. What what else, what were the other struggles for you and your family growing up in Nigeria before you came to Manchester? I think it was the it was the basic things. It was just not having access to uh, opportunities. Mm -hmm. I think that there's uh, there's not enough opportunities to go around. Uh, the inability for merit to be rewarded. Um, just because the systems are not in place to truly reward, uh, to reward merit. Um, and, and so for, for us, there are still a lot of those struggles. Mm. Um, Nigerians are very resilient people. Nigerians are very creative. Um, I, I think there's actually, uh, there's actually a study out there that says Nigerians uh, have the uh, largest percentage of educated uh, immigrants in the United States. So there's such there's such potential in in the country, uh, but um, it seems like everything is held within the grasp of a few, a very few. And so those who are not there's a, there's a lack of middle class. And so mm. those who are at the bottom of the ladder, they are left to kind of scrounge for whatever is left. Um, and, and you can't build anything like that. You can't build anything sustainably like that. So um, the basic amenities are not there to, to, to really inspire growth the way it should. You know, um, electricity is not stable. Uh, data is not, uh, data is expensive for the average Nigerian. So access to the internet, uh, while there's a lot of people accessing the internet, they're accessing the internet at great costs. Um, right. And, and just uh, Nigeria right now is going through a period with like 30 percent inflation. Uh, and so food prices are soaring. So uh, a lot of those challenges remain. But, you know, I I see them daily in, in the environment where I work in Nigeria. I see people who can barely feed, uh, get a hot meal a day. Um, but I, I like to kind of focus on the positives. I like to focus on the lights uh, and, and the stuff that we're doing. Um, I hope that the people in, in leadership positions are trying uh, to do what's right by the people. Uh, but from what we are seeing, there's a lot of people who they don't have the basic things. They don't have shoes on their feet. They don't mm -hmm. have clothing. Uh, a lot of people who do not have one meal. A lot of the kids who we serve are kids who um, the, the meal they get at the after school academy is their only meal for the day. Um, and so those, those are the people that we serve, but, um, but they're resilient and, and they are, they are great kids. But one thing that excites me about them is the kids come out and they speak to you, Andrew, and you probably think they attend one of the best private schools in the country. Uh, wow. and that is why they inspire me because just a little bit of structure, 
uh, and just providing their basic needs. And these kids are literally telling you that I can fly. <laughs> oh. They're telling you that I can fly. So to answer your question, a lot of the struggles persist. Um, mm -hmm. But there are also a lot of places where opportunities are starting to open up. Um, but we want to make sure that in, in a place where merit is not really rewarded, then we want our kids to to break those barriers or create the opportunities that will break those barriers uh, or figure out ways to uh, extend themselves in ways that um, you know how you can be too good to be ignored. <laughs> uh, and, and so in that environment, I, I always tell our kids be too good to be ignored, right? Um, and, and so um, just really trying to help them see the light to focus on the right things, to develop the right mindset, because you can get inundated with everything that's happening around you that you don't uh, propel yourself to success or focus on what's right. It's, it's kind of how I did it. It's not allowing my surroundings to define my direction. <laughs> so, uh, but instead focusing on really where I want to go uh, and in places where you don't have the in places where you have limited resources, you um, you adjust and you uh, you use the little that's available to you, um, and try to make the most of it, and then trust that God will multiply the seeds that you sow. Uh, that's kind of my my mindset towards it, and and it's the same that I, the same way that I'm I'm sharing that with the kids to not let their backgrounds kind of define. Uh, the direction in which they are traveling, but instead to focus on where they're heading and to maximize, to try and squeeze out the most they can out of every little ounce of opportunity that they see in a place where opportunities are so rare. Yeah, absolutely. So the opportunity for you to change your life before Joe was clearly basketball. You're, you've got a, a nice height of 6'10", am I correct with 6'10"? Or was it six nine? Six seven, six eight, six seven. Six seven. No, I six, thought you were slightly, slightly taller. Or maybe I was. Maybe <laughs> I've. Maybe I've shrunk in my old age. <laughs> um, we were so still, we were still growing at the time. So I, I'm that's sure you true. expected me to add three more inches. Something. <laughs> <laughs> so where did where what did basketball look like for you in Nigeria before going to to coming to us in Manchester? Basketball looked. Uh, basketball looked like um there was mostly one basketball for 30 people to share wow uh, how did you how did like, you become so good <laughs> yeah well i i wouldn't say i was good but um well i beg to basketball differ what was uh basketball was played outdoor uh on uh really a a tarred road with potholes yeah. and so you had to dribble around those holes when you try to make baskets um and and some of the infrastructure now is better than it was 20 or so years ago mm -hmm. um but uh for for us basketball looked like that you played basketball without a net on the rim right you just yeah you played basketball without a net on the on the rim most times um and our coaches didn't have the resources that they needed to truly coach the way that yeah. they're supposed to coach so um, it was really a sport that I think when I came to England, my eyes were open, like, wow, this is basketball, right? Mm -hmm. It felt like I didn't really know the sport, uh, even with all the, uh, with all the, the training that I felt like I'd received in Nigeria, but, um, basketball looked like people exchanging jerseys just to play. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, basketball looked like, uh, people playing pickup and then, you know, you run and then when it's your turn to play someone switches their shoes for you and then you play with someone else's pair of shoes or something yeah um while it sounds sad it was actually a community that fostered sharing right um and so you kind of when you live in the midst of people where there's very little sharing becomes a priority right um mm -hmm. and so uh, that was what basketball looked like. I still yeah. remember the uh, Nike Air that my brother bought for me at the time. And um, probably four or five people would wear that shoe in a span of three, four hours on the basketball court. So wow. <laughs> that, that reminds um, me of the docu documentary of um, Jihanis. Have you seen that documentary? I haven't seen it. I, 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 yeah, I, I, will, I will look at it sometime. I do know that it's out there. 
Yeah, no, it's very similar. He shared the shoes with his uh, with his brother and went and off, yeah. on and off the court. So mm -hmm. that was my, that's my like text to text connection there mm -hmm. um, between you and uh, you and that documentary. Very very similar. Uh, so I mean, he obviously was in he was in a, I forget where he was, but then he went to Greece. Greece, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so we get to Manchester. What was that? You've just explained already, you know, going into, I'm sure, Matt, well, for those who don't know the Amici Centre, by the way, Amici Centre is um, created and founded by John Amici, who was the first British basketball player into the NBA. Um, he built this big, beautiful facility where Lovedale is talking about. When you walked in there, what did, was that such a shock to you, seeing these beautiful glass backboards and so on coming down from the, the roof outward? How do you remember that day? It was a shock. Um, I would say that because uh, before then, the only indoor sports hall I'd been in was the national stadium of uh, the country. Mm -hmm. And so I saw that and I saw the Amici Basketball Center and it was better kept. And it was uh, actually more shiny than where the whole country of Nigeria called it best, ba its best basketball court at the time. So, mm. so when I stepped in and I, and I think the center had just been built when I stepped in and I saw three basket, full size basketball courts, I think that was what got me the most. Cause we were trying to scrounge for one and we had all these people and I saw like, you know how you see many toys and you're like, which one do I play with? Right. That's yeah. kind of yeah. how it felt like there are three basketball courts and this yeah. floor feels so nice that you know it felt like i could bounce on it you know when you're jumping on tarred roads right it's like you know Mate, you um, did more than bounce like on that court you could bounce on it so um i guess now you're not surprised why i always wanted to be in the gym because it was so nice plus it was air conditioned i was sweating like crazy outside in in nigeria in the 80 degree 90 degree uh weather but uh, there was just a lot of things about that place but most importantly it wasn't the floors were nice and I was overwhelmed by how nice the place was. Uh, but I think what I was really, truly overwhelmed by was yeah. um, just the, the attention that people paid to you, mm -hmm. right? Um, how welcoming it was. Um, I remember, do you remember Mr. Graham? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Graham, uh, Mr. Williams. Mr. Yeah, uh, Mr. Minister, uh, Mr. Jones, um, just how everyone, um, you know, Paul Middleton, Coach Sergio, Coach Nate, just how welcoming everyone was. Um, and I think sometimes you, when you, when you leave every day and everyone is just trying to get by, you don't get that sense of attention. You get, you don't get that sense of, oh. I matter or they matter because everyone is just going in different directions. But I think it was one of those times where I truly felt a pause, like, okay, like these people are paying attention to me. They're paying attention to what I want to do. They're paying attention to what I need. And I've seen that play out in so many ways. I see that play out when we bring, we have kids that we've brought to the U S there's 10 of our, there's 10 kids that A2S has, you know, supported to come to the U S to continue their education. And when they go to class and the teacher says, yeah, if you need any help after school, just let me know. And they're like, nobody ever asks us this, you know, at home, right? Because everyone is just so busy. The teacher is thinking about the next thing they need to do, you know, to try and make money to help put food on, on, their, on their family's table. Um, and I think that was just such a gift, you yeah. know? That was yeah. just such a gift that... Um, for once, it just felt like people actually paid attention to you. It felt like... Mm. Um, it felt like you were seen. Um, and I think that uh, when things are so busy and everyone in Nigeria is just really trying to get by, right? People, you're, it's almost like you're living life and just passing each other by. Uh, and there's barely, you don't have the time to pause and think or, or time to really uh, share. Um, I think that was something that I think it was overwhelming because for the first time I got to pause and are you okay? Hey, what's going on? Are you? Um, and so I think that the culmination of just being in an atmosphere like that, that was significant, significantly different or better from where I was coming or anything that I'd experienced before 
and then matching that with the curiosity of the people and the care of the people that I met. Um, I thought that, that those were two big things and it felt like they, they came together and really just shook my world in a good way. Yeah. It, it's amazing to hear that's, you know, your perspective, because for us, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't, we're naive to what you'll have been through. And we're just seeing Andrew Lovedale coming to play basketball. He's an amazing basketball player. He's here to play. And let's just be mates. We don't see that. You know, obviously there's a, the young side of it as well, where we're young in life. We're naive mm -hmm. and we don't understand where you've come from and the journey you're on. To us, you're just Andrew Lovedale. He's yeah. an amazing guy. Let's hang out. You know, we don't I, know really. And I loved it. And of I course, loved because it's normality, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. You, you're getting treated just for for just being you and mm -hmm. being authentic, right? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, that's what you probably wanted. Yeah, really exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I loved it. I I I really really appreciated that as well. Yeah, mm. um, because I didn't want to be treated differently. I wanted to. And I think that in doing that, it allowed me to really assimilate quicker than I yeah. would have, right? Yeah, uh, sure. It just felt like, hey, I I needed to I needed to do the catching up. No one had to slow me down. I don't mm. know if that makes sense. No, it really does, absolutely. And you know, if people are interested, go to YouTube, type in Andrew Lovedale Davidson because the power this guy had on the court was one of the best I've ever seen. It was too remarkable to see you, not just your defense, but obviously being a young bloke, we just, I just yeah. admired the way you flew and dumped over people. Oh my Lord. <laughs> it was insane. No, but there's a lot I, more to your game than I, that. And now I see people jump and I hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know I've got sciatica left, right and center, you know, um, <laughs> pain in my back not that i ever dunked it so i don't understand yeah. the issues that uh <laughs> that you had um okay so you know we we're, we're we're young and you get a, an awesome opportunity talk to us quickly about the opportunity that transitional period from manchester to davidson uh, and where davidson stood in basketball terms at that point in time because Davidson wasn't Davidson really as it is today is it was it when you went join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way don't forget to subscribe we'll see you then